we've heard quite a few things about superstar firms, and I would like to uh, uh, avoid repetition. Let me just set the stage and focus maybe a little bit more on some of these consequences that David has also uh, already talked about. I mean, we know that superstar firms are everywhere. They're in tech, but they're also in more traditional industries, such as textiles or the beer industry. And one of the issues is that we see these dominant firms having a macroeconomic implication, economy-wide, and it's just because they are so large and dominant. It's not that many firms. If we, in our analysis, look at the, the data, we see it's probably globally about five or 600 firms, but they are so big that they have a macroeconomic impact uh, going very, very far. And the best way, I think, to illustrate this is that, that uh, if I see what happens to startups, I have a friend, Alex, who used to uh, be in, in Silicon Valley, and some time ago we, we met and talked about really what was going on with his business, and he told me he had decided to close down the business. Now startups close down all the time. But as we met, we were talking over a beer, we saw a news announcement at the same time there was this announcement that the Dow Jones had reached at that time 25,000, which is now, uh, uh, was in 2019, just before the pandemic, and then reached 37,000, is back down again now. And then he said, there's basically something that doesn't really square to me. On the one hand, we see this hugely successful stock market performance, and at the same time, we see things that he says, even in Silicon Valley, the whole startup scene has changed. It's very different. He had been in Silicon Valley for nearly 20 years. And it's not just you know, the startup scene, it's also what happens to production and service workers. And if we see the data, what happens to the data, these consequences are that really you know, startups have fallen from around 14% of all firms to around 8%. That's in the United States. They've fallen similar or more in Europe. Okay, the data is now coming in and we see very similar trends. So there's something really going on in terms of innovation because startup firms are firms that are typically hiring more young workers. They're more innovative. They innovate more per uh, uh, unit of sales that they have. And so this has an impact on the amount of innovation that we see and then also on the amount of business dynamism, dynamism that we see uh, in the economy. And it's not only the effect that this has on the startup firms, but it also has an effect on wages. And now you say, well, there could be two different ways in which this affects wages. It could be directly, if I have a dominant firm, it just has such a large pres presence in a local market that they can affect the wages. This is monopsony, and I, I understand we're going to hear more of that uh, this afternoon. But there's also another way in which dominant firms affect wages, and it's a very indirect way. It's a little bit more complex, but let me just walk you through it. The way it works is that if there's a large enough number of firms that are dominant in the economy, they basically sell their products at higher prices than what it costs. And that means that basically fewer units are being sold because customers are responsive to prices. And so you basically get less units sold, therefore fewer units that are being produced. And if you produce less, you basically have less demand for labor. And that's the channel that leads from this large number of dominant firms, large in the sense of a large share of the economy, to basically lower labor demand and lower wages. And, and I wanted to stress this because it's important to also think and set the stage as to what kind of consequences we're looking at here in this uh, uh, new economy, if you want, with these superstar firms. Now, there's been a lot of debate about what to do, and we'll have more of that debate uh, uh, with the next speakers and in, in, in the discussion later. Of course, there's, there's also a question as to the extent uh, uh, to which these firms are going to be, um, um, you know, what is it exactly that we can do about it? Okay, What are the kind of tools that we have uh, 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 to, to do something about it. There's one thing that's clear is that these firms, of course, typically are dominant because they have an ability to generate a lot of volume and sales at a large scale. This large scale is actually beneficial. And what we see also in the data is that these many that the dominant firms are also very beneficial to the customers. They ge generate a lot of value in the economy. But they also use these new technologies to stop or refrain competitors from entering into this market. And I think it's that trade-off 
that's on the table here. You know, the benefits from this scale with the extent to which we can have enough competition. And I hope we can discuss uh, in what follows about ways in which we can get there. Thanks. Wow.